Now we're gonna cover IM injections, also known as intramuscular injections. Now there's a bunch of needles as well as locations. So we're gonna break down locations first, and then we're gonna talk about needle sizes. So the normal locations are inside the muscle. So we have four basic types. Right here in the deltoid, and we're gonna show you how to really measure it. So Kat. Now if you don't do these all the time, you actually do need to feel for the bone here. Mm -hmm. And then you're just measuring right below that. So a chromium process, and then you've got a nice little triangle here, and that's your meat, okay? So that's the muscle you're sticking. Not back here. Right in there. Right here, okay? So that's your triangle there. Mm -hmm. You wanna go a few inches down. Then we have the normal biggest one, the vastus lateralis, which we're trying to, basically the thigh. We're trying to get in between the knee and the hip, basically in the middle section there, just get a real big meaty portion. That's really reserved for um, high volume IM injections. For children, that's where our best IM sites are because some of their other muscles aren't very well developed yet. Now we also do have two glute locations. So there's one of them that we don't do anymore, which is the dorsal gluteal. And that comes from the bony prominence here to this hip, okay? So this is your line. We don't stick here anymore, okay? From hip bone to round bone at the end of the spine, okay? We don't stick there anymore. There's a, a nerve right there. Yeah, the reason we don't stick there anymore is because of the sciatic nerve. Sometimes you can hit that and cause a lot more trauma. Now, there's actually a great muscle right here. And when you feel on somebody's hip, you can feel where there's bone and then there's muscle. Now there's actually a triangle that you can draw there as well to find that muscle, but it's actually really clear for most people, except folks that are real hippie like me. What are some common reasons why we give IM injections anyways? Gosh, so we give IM injections really commonly for um, vaccines, for um, hormone injections, for certain antibiotics, steroids. Um, those are probably the most common. And typically we're giving anywhere between one ml to what's the max? Three milliliters is the absolute max, and you really need a great reason to do that. Um, so anything much above one milliliter, you, you need to consider whether or not you should break it up into two injections based on how much muscle mass your patient actually has. Now we're gonna go into the needle sizes, and right after, I'm gonna get poked with an IM injection, which Kat will do on me. So on the outside of every package, it's actually gonna show you what gauge and what length your needle is. So you don't have to guess and you don't have to compare. However. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. What you see here is a sub-Q needle. You see that it's very short and very small. Now your insulin needles and your tuberculosis injection needles, the needles you use for heparin, often have orange or brown caps that are slightly similar in color. Then you have your IM injection needles. So this is a one inch and it's a 22 gauge. Now whether it's an IV or an IM, it's going to have that blue hub. The green and pink one are both one and a half inch needles. The green hub means that it's a 20 gauge and the pink means that it's an 18 gauge. And you can see they're both the same length, so they're both one and a half inches long, but the 18 gauge is much larger around, so it's more appropriate for thick injections. So now we're actually going to give Mike an intramuscular injection and show you how that works. Mike, roll up your sleeve. All right, but uh, did you bring your tickets? Tickets? To the gun show. <laughs> okay, okay, bad joke. All right, Ooh. here we go. <laughs> All right, so again, just so you remember, I've got the acromion process here, mm -hmm. just a nice big old shoulder bone there, and I'm going to feel a couple of finger breaths below that, and then I've got my little triangle here, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Don't miss that. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. All right. It's going to be bad, dude. All right. So, again, I've got my bone, my two fingers, and here's my triangle, okay? 
Now, depending on what your textbook looks like and what your facility policy looks like, you might want to draw this taut. Um, and some places are teaching you to pinch it up. That's not accepted practice yet. So I've just drawn it taut, okay? And I'm gonna hold it here. And then I'm gonna go in at a 90 degree angle like a dart. And I'm going to inject. Older school practice is to aspirate first to make sure that you haven't hit um, any kind of vessels in the muscle. For the most part, research has agreed that it's actually more dangerous um, to aspirate first, that it actually causes more damage. Mm -hmm. So we don't really do that anymore. But you need to look at your institution policy for what they want you to do. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching the intramuscular injection. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>